Hello, Father Jay here. I hope you all had a very happy and good new year that, uh, you know, you're filled with hope with this new year because I think we need that. We all need it at this point in time. Yeah, there's a lot of problems still, but we have to hope. And that's a good thing. That's what that whole Christmas season that's behind us now, unfortunately, talks to us about. Small, small hope, but it moves on, it moves on. Sunday, we celebrated the feast of the baptism of our Lord, the end of the Christmas season, and we begin now ordinary time. But let's reflect a little bit about baptism, the baptism of Christ. You know, we have the scriptures that says, you know, everybody was saying, what? Why? What's going on here? Why is he going to John? Even John himself asking that question. What are you doing here? I'm here, John says, to give baptism, a washing away of sins, a pleading with God for those who are repentant to be forgiven, to be cleansed. But you have no need. There's no reason for you to be here. Well, in one sense, yes. In one sense, no. As Jesus says, let us do the Father's will. Let us make everything perfect. Why? Because he was changing things. He was changing things for the better. John was there asking. Christ is there giving. An answer to the prayers. But not an answer just for John or for those at the River Jordan. But for all time to come. And when he was returning to the Father, his admonition to his apostles was to go forth and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that which we have today. And, you know, I think it might be good to reflect on our baptisms. Yeah, I know. You don't remember it. At least most of you don't. Maybe one or two exceptions in the crew. But we don't remember. We were infants. I mean, you know, how old were we? A couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe less, maybe more, but still young. What happened in our baptisms? Well, our sins were washed away. Yeah. We became children of God. Yeah. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. Members of the church. Of course. All of these things, but what do they symbolize? Or actually not symbolize but accomplish what does it mean to be freed from sin think of a prisoner his time is up his sentence completed he walks out the gates of that prison and I don't know if any of you have ever really seen those prisons but it's a complex in and out process and you know you get out and you look back and you realize the freedom the freedom that you have not had the freedom to be and that's what baptism gives us that type of freedom from sin to actually be a child of God to actually work with our father at accomplishing something and that's good that's good what does it mean to be a child of God what well, means to be a member of a family and you know there are families there are good families there's bad families there are successful and unsuccessful families. There are mixed families. There's all kinds of families in our world. But let us look at what we're looking at. We have the example of the Holy Family. Not perfect. They did not always understand one another. But what held them together was love. Love, care, and concern. And a deep feeling for one another. They wanted only the best. Only the best for one another. 
And you know, God is the father of this family. That's what he wants for us. And that's the opportunity he gives us in baptism. But like in all families, you can have the rebel, the black sheep. You can have the obedient child. Christ, throughout his ministry, kept speaking about that. When he talked to people like the prodigal son, the lost sheep, all of those things. It's up to us. We've been given a great freedom in God's family. One that we can use or abuse. And God gives us that choice because he loves us. No longer as creatures. No longer as part of his creation. But as part of his family. His own reality. Wow. How wonderful is that? But in every family, we need contact with the other members of the family. And that's where the church comes in. And yeah, it's stumbled. It's crawled. In the past generation or two, maybe even three, it's been filled with scandal. It's been filled with horror. It has chopped itself like, unfortunately, those people who cannot stop cutting themselves. It needs healing. But the healing has to come from within, not without. And that's us, the members of the family, to heal one another. And that's what the church is all about. A family trying to work together, trying to make things right together. Do we agree on everything? Oh, definitely not. You know, I love my brother, but I'm a Democrat and he is a Republican. And right now a die in the heart Republican. And I find that hard to accept. Do I stop loving him? Do I stop caring about him? Do I stop trying to do what's good for him? And me in our relationship? No, I don't. And neither should we in the church. We have to accept that we are a church of Christ, infallible in our divinity, extremely fallible in our humanity. And that's where we need to work together. And that's why I say that baptism brings us into all of these things. We can cop out if we want to. We can say, I don't want to be bothered. It's too much of a struggle. But no. And so what am I saying here today? I'm saying, help one another. Pray for one another. Look to the Holy Spirit whom we do receive in baptism to be our guide, our director, our unity, our peace. Pray to the Holy Spirit to help and guide us, to direct us, to strengthen us, to give us that continuing love for all of the family of God, that we may constantly work to make it better, more what it should be. Have a good day and a happy new year.